Welcome to C Programming Tutorials. Um, this tutorial is part of a collection of uh, C Programming Tutorials, a, a series of C Programming Tutorials. If you have, if you haven't watched any of those, I would recommend that you watch those uh, a lot of other tutorials as well. In this particular tutorial, we will be talking about strings, which are basically array of characters. So, if you haven't watched the previous tutorials about arrays, I would recommend that you do so. And I would really appreciate if you if you if you basically become the fan of the Facebook page, uh, awesome C programming tutorials in high def, uh, or subscribe to YouTube channel Learnorama, uh, and and I will also really appreciate if you could basically um, uh, give me some feedback by you know posting some comments in the in either on Facebook or on YouTube page, um, so that I know you know how I am doing and uh, and 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 I know that there is out there somebody out there who is benefiting from what I am trying to do here. Uh, anyway, so um, let's let's get started. So today, in today t today's tutorial, we are going to be learning about the concepts of strings. Okay, strings basically, by definition, they are actually um, a series, a sequence of characters. Okay. For example, you know, everywhere around us, we use strings a lot. Okay. For example, name. Okay, name is a string. So so here this is my name and this is a string so um, how how the question is how do we store these strings so if you think about it these are actually this string is a collection of these characters a sequence of these characters okay so all of these are character types so the best way to represent something which is the same you know multiple of the same like in our, in our previous tutorial we learned how to rest store uh, the ages of multiple you know a lot of, of multiple kids you know and it's since all the ages are integers so the best way to represent them is to basically create an array of uh, of integers and and call it an you know age and how many whatever how many the students are there you create that many uh, elements so suppose there were like 10 students you create uh, uh, an array like this age of 10 okay now in the same way if I have to store this string what I have to do is to basically create an array of characters data type here it was integer so each one of those could be integer like 9 years old 10 years old 3 years old and so on uh, to like 10 years old okay and here this is a character this is a character this is a character so what I should be doing is basically represent is is defining character and say you know the the name of the array which would be name you know you could you could call it whatever you want um, and then f in square brackets we basically uh, write the number of elements that we want to store now in this particular example there are six characters but everybody's name is different so let's put something like you know a little bit lo longer so that it covers most of the names most of the first names at least so let's say 10 okay so if I represent this with this diagram that how it will look like in memory conceptually it would what it's gonna do is what it's saying is that allocate memory and call it call it by name name you know and then how many elements it will have it will have enough elements it will have 10 elements each element will be of data type character so if this is one character this is enough to store one character then what we want is basically 10 of those 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay and as we learned before this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and nine. These are the index indices of these elements. Index range from zero to one less than the total number of elements here. Okay, so this is how the string name can be conceptualized in memory. Okay, and in each one of those, since I can store one character, I could store S here, O here, H here, A here, I here, and L here. Okay, so this is how write I I store my name in that string name in here okay what about the leftover spaces here okay we don't know what these what what characters are gonna be in here they are not blank 
So remember, so let's let's look at how this gets re represented. So when we were learning about binary number system, I told you that inside the memory, there is only thing that you can store is numbers. Okay, memory is basically a sequence of bits. If you haven't watched that tutorial, I would recommend that you watch it. The title of the tutorial is binary number system. So a memory is a sequence of bytes. Okay, each byte is actually eight. Uh, each byte is eight bits. Each bit is actually either zero or one. So this is one byte, eight bits. Okay, this is one byte, and one character can be stored in one byte. So I can write S in this whole byte. Okay, now how can I write S with only zeros and ones? So what they have done is basically for every character A, B, C, D, what they have done is they have defined some codes okay some numbers okay the numbers range from 0 to 255 because as we learned in the binary number system tutorial that basically in 8 bits you can write maximum number that you can write is 255 and the minimum number that you can write is 0 so these numbers are from 0 to 255 their name is s key a s c i i so when you have to write s what it does is it doesn't write s because it cannot write s what it does is it writes the s key code of s whatever the S key code of S is I don't remember but it doesn't matter so that number represents S similarly O H A I L here there is something still written there is the, it cannot be blank it has to be either 0 or 1 so it is a combination of zeros and ones okay something like that here as long as you don't unless you initialize it there is some garbage sitting here okay something is written here and how do we stop it from you know not being part of this string so hell that we wrote here okay how do we do that okay so what do we, what we have to do is to basically write an end of a string character or null terminator and it is a zero you write a zero here you initialize you end your string with zero in this byte okay in this guy ca each character is one byte long so these are actually one byte each of them okay and here this is one byte which is basically the same as this whole thing okay this whole thing is the same as this small character here okay you have to write in this at the end of this string you have to write zero so actually the my name is even though it is it has six characters it needs seven total characters to store okay so that's a good practice if you want if you expect your names to be 10 10 bytes long or 10 characters long you don't define this string as 10 characters you define it for 11 characters why because you want to end that name which has 10 characters the longest name which has 10 characters you want to def end it create 11 elements here and you end it with a zero if it is smaller than 10 characters which is in my case it is it is only six characters long you write it on the seventh character you write zero on the seventh character so I hope you you guys you guys understand how it's going on so to represent this string you need any string of n number of characters you need an array of n plus one characters okay and this defines a string and this null terminator basically signifies the end of a string so I hope this helps you understand the concept of string. Uh, if you like this tutorial, please rate it five stars. And don't forget to watch the continuation of this tutorial. We'll continue to talk about uh, strings more in the next tutorial. Thank you so much.